Hello and welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. And today is another 360 video, so go down to the options and go to very high quality because otherwise you can't just enjoy it the best possible way. Yeah, I'm here at Tamdu today. Tamdu is unfortunately not open to the public. So yeah, you can only enjoy it with video form with me today. A little bit of history, Tamdu was founded in 1897 and back in the day it was Victorian age. The whole industry was in turmoil and new technology was introduced and Tamdu was kind of a tech startup. Yeah, it was a new technical company with high-tech equipment and yeah, they set up this distillery here and it was revolutionized with new styles and everyone was like, oh my god, yeah. Uh, later in the 1940s, they introduced the maltings. They had this new technology called the Saladin boxes. And it was basically a box and you have put uh, grain in it, um, drain it, uh, drench it with water and then have rakes turning it so it gets air into it and you don't have any molds or anything growing it because you have fresh air in it. And that was the way of malting back in the days and it's yeah, really innovative, so it was perfect for the uh, Tamdu distillery. And it lasted until um, 2010 and they produced 15,000 tons of malt per year. And they even supplied different distilleries with this malt. So it was, it was really a, a good, good way of making business. Unfortunately, fortunately, it was discontinued. Um, in the 70s, the distillery expanded a bit. They started off with uh, one wash still, one spirit still. Then they went uh, in, I think, 72 or something like that. Um, they went to a 2 plus 2 model. And then in uh, 74, they went to 2 plus 2 plus 2. So they ended up with six stills. They had plans for eight stills, but mm, they never realized that. So it's, it's kind of a, a medium-sized distillery here in the space side. Uh, but it has a big amount of warehouses. And today we're going to find out what Tamdu is all about. So the two most important ingredients within whiskey is water and malt. Let's talk about the water. The water comes from a water source below the distillery. There it's two hatches down and then you have plenty of water. It's probably because the river Spey is so close. So the guys at the distillery said, yeah, such a reliable water source, such good equipment. They haven't been down there for a decade. Yeah and they, they checked the levels when it was really, really dry and they found out that, yeah, the water supply is so plenty they will never run out. So not a big problem here because, yeah, the river Spey, they could probably just take the river for, uh, water from the river Spey. Mm. Yeah. Um, the malt here at the distillery is very special. Before it came from an old maltings and now it comes from the big maltings like the Simpsons in Northern England. And um, usually when you had a Tamdu, you realize it's a, a pleasant, unpeated whiskey. And what the guys at Tamdu told me is they're not an unpeated whiskey. They have two PPB, so it's parts per billion. That's a thousand times less than you have in different other distilleries. So yeah, it's infinitesimally small. So yeah, it's uh, pretty much an unpeated whiskey. And if you look around, you see big malt mill, big malt bins. Why is everything so big? Are they really using that much? Nope. This is from the time when they had their own, own malting. So they actually milled down the malt and you could buy uh, the grist in bags and they would ship it out during this window and load it into trucks. So the distillery actually sold the grist to other distilleries. Oh, I don't know, maybe bakeries need, need something as well. Yeah, the malt mill is a two roller mill and you can adjust the, the size of the grist, how fine it is ground down. And this is very important for the next stage is the mashing and the fermenting. And therefore also very important for the taste. Behind me is the mash tun. Yeah, it's the new mash tun, but the last time they put in a new mash tun was 72. So yeah, it is already a bit old, yeah. 
they renovated it pretty good it's it's in good shape they have new sensors up there so it's yeah up to the standard um, it's a semi uh, lauder ton it's stainless steel it has one rake in the middle and in two washings they actually produce uh, 53,500 liters of wort and the last one the last water is used as a recycling water for the first run of the next process and here at Tamdu they believe in a in a clear wort what they do is they filter out any bits and solid pieces inside the wort so they only have the liquid left and that is very important for the fermentation in the next step but let's focus a bit more on the award before it goes to the fermentation behind you is the heat exchanger you see a pipe of wort going in and in that heat exchanger the wort is cooled down to 70 degrees 17 degrees celsius which is pretty low and that's the best temperature to start off with with the yeast to produce alcohol and the, the good thing is you have a second pipe going through that heat exchanger and that is actually a liquid that is being heated up so you can take the excess heat and heat up another liquid so you don't have to put in that much energy to heat any liquids in the distillery that saves energy and is really environmental friendly so i'm here in this uh, rooms with wash bags it looks really really nice we have nine wash bags and they're all made of oregon pine this one is a bit newer the other ones are a bit older this one looks really old and um, they are quite huge but they only fill them up to uh, 53.5 thousand liters so they have a, a pretty huge gap between um, the level of uh, wort and the very top and this is because they have this clear wort because, because this clear wort when it uh, has alcoholic fermentation it turns into wash you have a lot of bubbles going on there and therefore you have a lot of foam and you have to look, really look out so it doesn't bubble over um, what they do is they leave a bit of space there for the for the foam to settle and also they have these blades that cut down the foam yeah so it doesn't bubble over the positive side effect of this clear wart is and this bubbling is that you get a really 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 fruity wash so that's what they the people at Tam, uh, Tamdu are looking for they want to have a really really fruity wash so you have a fruity spirit and yeah that's what we like about the Tamdu spirit in terms of yeast they use a liquid yeast just as, because it's a, a more stable process maybe it's a bit more expensive you need a bit more high-tech equipment with the cooling of the yeast but it gives you a really stable result stable factors and really mm, yeah the product has more quality to it in the end we're looking at a beer with about eight to ten percent alcohol and this is off to the stills room so i'm here in the heart of the distillery again and this is the still room behind me is low wine still number one and then we have wash still number one and this was actually the center of the distillery this is where in 19 uh, in 1897 the two stills were placed when the distillery was built we don't know actually how big the stills were but yeah this will always remain a mystery then in 72 we had two new stills put in wash still number two low wine still number two and in the end of the room we have uh, the number three pair and that was built in 74. the wash still is 22,500 liters in capacity and the low wine still in 18,600 uh, liters capacity and um, every wash still has to work twice for every low wine still to be filled so you can easily make out how fast every step is working and if we look at a, a still it has this huge capacity but we don't fill it up to that capacity we only fill it up to about here and this is as you see a part that has been replaced this is because you have high temperature you have high pressure and you have that moving bubbling from the spirit inside 
and that is actually working against the copper. So the copper is current, always being taken off and the copper is becoming thinner and thinner. And when it comes down to about two millimeters, which is two sixteenths of an inch, one eighth of an inch, um, then we really have a bit of a problem area where the high uh, pressure uh, point might arise and it might burst and create a huge disaster. So what the people at Tamdu did, they said, okay, this is too thin for us, now we're gonna replace a piece. So they got this part cut out, taken out the old copper, taken in the thicker copper, put it in, weld it in, grind it down, polish it, and now it's as good as new. So we don't know where the cutoff points are and not exactly how, how high they distill, but they are a bit above 73% ABV. And after that, they lower it down to 63.5% ABV, and then it is off to the warehouse. So I'm standing in one of these Dunnage warehouses at Tamdu. Tamdu has a lot of warehouses. They have 20 warehouses, and this is far too big for this medium-sized distillery. And that's because the Tamdu distillery also stores casks from other brands for other blends from their mother company Ian McLeod. They send them casks to be stored here and even other distilleries and uh, other grain manufacturers store stuff in here. Yeah, the Tamdu single malt is actually limited to only sherry wood casks. So these big sherry butts here, they might be filled with Tamdu single malt, but no other butts, uh, no other casks here, like this here is, uh, looks like a hogshead or American barrel. They are filled with grain spirit or other malt whiskey from other distilleries. And the demand for storing whiskey is so high and the production of Tamdu is also very high, so they have to build more warehouses. They want to build eight new warehouses until the end of 2019. So in the end, they will have 28 warehouses, which is quite a lot. So um, what they also want to do is they want to build a cooperage. And this cooperage is not a cooperage where you build new casks, but they actually want to refurbish their casks, repair their casks. And this is yeah, a sensible move if you have such a big warehouse location and there are tons of casks that get damaged or have cracks or leak every day. So they can just ship them to their own cooperage, repair them and get them back into stock. Hopefully, I can now switch to the 360 degree interview, but if that's not the case, then see you and hopefully I'll see you in the interview. I'm sitting here with Sandy McIntyre. You've been in the business for 12 years now and four years at Tamdu. Thank you very much for having us here. It's a great pleasure having people um, visit Tamdu. Yeah. What are we having today? We've got uh, three um, different drinks for us to share. Mm -hmm. We've got a Tamdu New Make Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, straight from the stills, uh, so Ooh. effectively cleric as, as we would call it as well. Mm -hmm. So it's 69.7%, so it's before it's been reduced for cask filling. Mm -hmm. We've got a Tamdu 10 year old. Um, we know that we're moving in, the, in Europe and the rest of the world across the Tamdu 12. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any of that stock here because uh, we can't actually bring it up to the site here because mm -hmm. we haven't paid duty on some of that <laughs> okay and then we've got tamdu batch three which is a non-aged uh, one of our releases which is an one release. of the the cask strength whiskies right uh, we we call it batch strength so it's a cask it is, it is effectively like a cask strength however we have actually manipulated that strength so we've actually reduced the strength of that spirit mm -hmm. down to a filling strength that we wanted to fill at so oh, it's okay. not the cask, it's not the liquid that's come from the cask. We have actually reduced the strength down. But it's still, what is it, 58.3? Uh, 58.3, is 58 .3, yes, so it's still, still a chunky a, whiskey. Yeah. Still a, still a heavy whiskey. Oh yeah, by far. So uh, I'm really excited about your new make, so what are we expecting? Time to famously fruity. Um, so let's, let's get tore into it. Um, we produce a, a very light character, it's very fruity, it's very bright, it's bursting to get out of bottle at you. Bursting mm -hmm. to get out the glass. Um, 
Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm pleased you did that without even any any reaction. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's 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 actually still very soft and on the palate as well. But you know, in in the glass here, some hints of vanilla, some pear, some apple, mm-hmm. a um, lot of pear, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of apple. Yeah, but it's a bit of a. Usually, you get a bit of more of a green apple. This is a more of a red, a red apple. Yeah, yeah, a bit of a, right. one of these. Flowery ones, but the drier ones, not not. It's, not it's quite the hint of vanilla that yet, I but get it's, as well. It's very very ripe, and that hint of vanilla in the very back. Yeah, yeah. But it's kind of a, a vanilla that you reminds you of uh, of baking cookies or okay. or something like that. It's a, it's a mm. slight sweetness to it as well. Mm-hmm. But have a taste of it, and what I do when people have a taste of Tamdun you make is I actually more watch their faces. Any other distillery that I've worked at. When you taste the new make, you tend to, to, to watch the person and they kind of <laughs> cringe as if, oh, that was, that was a painful experience. But when people drink Tam Du new make, they actually enjoy it. <laughs> it sounds a strange <laughs> thing to say because um, it's not too, too fiery on, the, on the, the back of the tongue and in the throat. So and have a wee taste of this and let's see what you think. Sixty nine seven. So it's mm. strong stuff. Mm, strong stuff. Oh, very sweet. It's it's actually mm-hmm. still quite smooth though. I mean, mm. and smooth, I, yeah. You definitely. don't you don't get this you know fiery it's intensity an, coming back up your throat into the fru- mouth. A fruity, oily one, mm. but very light, mm. definitely. But strangely, uh, it's a bit oily and mm, even a bit creamy. Mm, but it's. But it's really light and fruity, though. Well, mm. We have people asking mm-hmm. us, can we buy this? <laughs> uh, we, we would like to use this as, as like a base for cocktails, like a, like a schnapps, mm-hmm. like a... Um, yeah, I always find that amazing that if you'd give me that straight in a blind tasting, I would go like, yeah, yeah that's maybe a pure schnapps. Yes, exactly <laughs> that, yeah, because it's got that kind of that fruitiness to it anyway. So, But I, I love the way it just, just kind of bursts out the glass and bursts out the bottle, yeah. aren't you? Um, it's, it's a fantastic new make and it's a great base starting point for us to work with the sherry casks that we've got at Tamdu. Mm-hmm. We, we exclusively mature in sherry casks here. Um, so that fruitiness with the, the, the fruit from the sherry really, really works well in the cask and, mm-hmm. and you know develops into the fantastic whiskey oh, yeah. we've got. I, I really like, um, as you told me and as I've told everybody, the, the one with the, uh, the clear mash yeah. and uh, all you... All the stuff you look out for that you get that fruity character, yeah. really nice. Production wise for us, it's very important. We get clear wort mm. that that really um, manifests itself in, in the washbacks as you saw today. Mm. Mm. I'm sure they were you know, near coming out the top of you. Yeah, <laughs> really <laughs> bubbly. You can get, 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 get quite kind of vigorous nice. at times, <laughs> um, and you know that really leads into us uh, working the stills the way we do as well. It's not a, a very fast distillation. It's certainly not the slowest by far. Mm-hmm. But you know we're not rattling the stuff through the still. So we're getting this good copper contact, mm-hmm. which allows us again to produce this, this light, um, fruity, and you make spirit, which again, mm-hmm. as I say, we take through to the cask. So I've seen a few signs and a few staves where, where it says, uh, Tamdu, the can-do spirit. <laughs> Why is yeah. that? What, what does that mean? <laughs> um, we're, we're a family-owned company. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got a great team here. There's a team of 17 of us here at the site. Mm-hmm. A lot of us actually stay on site. Cool. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's magic. It means that you can, can walk home um, at the end of the day after you've had a few of these. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it much easier. Well, that <laughs> makes it really much easier to be uh, uh, you know, a distiller who can taste the product and yeah. actually yeah. not violate the law in driving home. <laughs> You're probably right. And I, mean, it's, I mean, I stay at the other side of the warehouse, so it's fantastic for that. But one of the things that, that we've got is some autonomy to site. Mm-hmm. We, we are, or certainly I am involved, it is my name that goes on the bottle. Uh, we have a master blender down at our, uh, our head office in Broxburn. But when you see my signature on the, the, the packaging or on the bottle, unfortunately, it, it, the buck does rest with me with it. <laughs> um, so it is me effectively authorising that. And if it means for things like the, 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 the batch strength that we have here, that the master blender has to prepare a number of blends before I'm happy with it, mm-hmm. then that's what happens. Mm-hmm. Um, so we get on with things. We get on with the job. Uh, we know the quality of the spirit we've got in the bottle. We know the team. We know the packaging we've got. We've done revised that this year, so that people can see 
Mm -hmm. um, the quality of the liquid and the colour. It's all natural colour. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that in Germany, you guys, and I, I, I would just wish the whole industry would adopt it, that uh, if there is caramel added to the liquid, yeah. that that has to be put on the bottle or on the packaging. Unfortunately, if, if there's no nothing in it, you don't write natural colour in it. I think you're allowed to. Right. I think you're allowed to. I think there is natural colour on the bottles right. in, in Germany, well, but it's not like mandatory. I, I mean, I can completely understand why. Um, Definitely. Certainly companies are adding colour to, mm -hmm. are adding caramel uh, for the colour and, and to get consistency across the products. Mm -hmm. However, we don't need to do that at time, do What you see in the bottle has only been ever been a sherry cask and is only natural colour. The colour in, in our liquid is coming straight from the cask. Okay, so yeah. Shall we try? Let's try the yeah, let's, one. let's get tore in. Mm, oh yeah. I love that noise for a start. Just the, the cork from a bottle. Just yeah, I love the cork noise, but I also love the noise when when you have a full bottle and yeah, that's what I really love. <laughs> this is this is Tamdu ten at forty three. This is what what used to be the the standard um, core range in the, in Europe. Mm -hmm. the rest of the world so 43% I think it's a fantastic dram mm -hmm. in comparison to what we had in the UK as the uh, Tam Du Tain at 40 the 43 far surpasses it oh you're you can already smell it from that yeah, yeah it's just very this, this faint is a, and very this is a mix of European and American oak casks mm -hmm. and a mix of first fill and refill sherries oh it's it's darker and, and more f more dried fruity and more sherry tones than it, I expected it, it surprises you the complexity even for a 10 year old whiskey. Mm. So this is the 10 year old, this is the full bottle and this is just yeah, a, that's, the left. So, yeah, so you can see, yeah. you can see that we if enjoy you, it. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. But if you, if you look at that, that little bit there, then I would have expected a much more lighter. Yeah, from, but, from the colour uh, from the bottom, but when you actually see the colour in the, yeah, the, full, in the, bottle, the full bottle, and you realise. A, a bit richer, isn't it? Oh yeah, that's, that's the richness. richness. Mm. A bit of butterscotch and, yeah. and mm -hmm. vanilla fudge is, is the way I get oh, it. There's, there's more vanilla and caramel in it than, or butterscotch in it than I expected. Which, which is probably more so coming from the American oak. It's got to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's got to be. Rather than the, the European. I would have ex Because uh, you don't use any bourbon casks, uh, no. I would have expected much less. No bourbon in there at all. It's very sweet. It's but there's, there's a huge amount of fruit in it. And that, that, mm, that nice... Sherry, yeah, it's just oh, that's mm. definitely a enjoy nice sherry. Enjoy, cheers, slanger, slanger. Mmm, mmm, mmm. It is an exceptionally easy whiskey to drink. Mmm, you're still hanging on to it. I just enjoy it so much. Oh. <laughs> mm. Yeah, mmm. Again, a little bit of oiliness, but it's much more liquid. And oh, sweetness, the, the, fruits. It's, it's, it's rich, uh, isn't it? It's actually honey, quite rich. Charge, yeah. Vanilla. There's a wee bit of ripe banana in it as mm, well, like yeah. from time to time. Mm, yeah, it's this ripe fruit, but mm. also yeah, banana. Mm, what is that? Very ripe apple. We, bit. Well, yeah, I was going to say a wee bit of apricot, even at the apricot. back end. Yeah. Mm. I'm not yeah. Hmm. 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 But as you said, it's really an easy, an it, easy one. It, it's a bottle of whiskey mm. that you pick up in an evening, in a, during the day. Yeah, it's and before you know it, you're with friends, you're having good, good mm. fun, you're talking, you're, another one, and before you know it, you're again back at the bottle. It's um, definitely it's definitely an everyday drum. Oh, definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. definitely I, I mean, I, the, the term that I use mm. for it is a session whiskey. A session whiskey. Session whiskey. So you're, mm -hmm. you're having a session, a, a good Norwegian Scottish word is that you're having a session. So in other words, you know, it's, it's basically pulling the cork, throwing the cork away. And <laughs> Just, tonight, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we're having a session with it. Mm -hmm. We're going to enjoy it. We're going to have good crack and, and, and good chat mm -hmm. amongst us. Okay, so we're now in 2018 and you have been closed in 2010 to 2012. Yeah. Will we going to run in the shortage of the 10 and 12 year old in 2020, 2022? Uh, well, the, the simple answer to that is no. Um, <laughs> and I'll, I'll explain why. We, we are pulling the 10 year old. Um, the 10 year old mm -hmm. will no longer be available probably from the middle of next year. Mm -hmm. um, so that immediately removes the issue around the 10 year old. When we bought the distillery back in 2011, 2012, we bought some of the stock here at Tamdu. So it has very much been a piece of stock management over the last few years. And that's why we haven't had many expressions to give you. 
Mm-hmm. As a distillery manager, you, you sit here very impatient. Oh, I want a 12, I want a 15, I want a 21. <laughs> um, and and you, you just can't wait. Um, it is very much, we have had to, to manage the stock that we purchased and we've actually obviously been laying down stock since. Mm-hmm. Um, so when we do come to, yes, the 2020s, the 2022s, 2024s, um, it will be older stock you'll get in the bottle, but it'll still be labelled as a 12 or a 15. Oh, ah, okay. Interesting. Um, so we will still manage the supply, but it'll be slightly older stock. So we'll, there won't be a gap in that. Okay. So how about the, the portfolio, the the um, the different expressions? Will we see new ones on the market? How will the portfolio yeah, yeah. expand? It, it definitely will. Um, one of the things that, 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 again, because we've had to manage the stock over the last few years, mm-hmm. that's why we haven't done much in terms of the expansion of the range. It's why it's only now that you're starting to see a 12. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will have a 15 probably by April or May next year. Um, mm-hmm. oh, so 2019 cool. for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will hopefully by the end of 2019 also have a... Well, we, we sampled a 16-year-old cask yesterday mm-hmm. and it was phenomenal. Uh, absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. Um, whether we go with an 18 and wait for an 18-year-old at the back end of next year or I actually think we could take something a wee bit earlier, so this is my view on it, <laughs> um, which is maybe a bold statement to make, um, because Tam do at 16 or 17 will be a cracker of a drum, and I'm just wondering whether that's the right age, mm-hmm. is, is our, you know, is our pièce de résistance, is around that age rather than even wait until an 18. Okay, so... It's still a bit vague what will come out during the next years, but we definitely will see something. Definitely we'll see, say, the 15 start of our uh, first quarter of mm-hmm. uh, 2019. We will also be doing the second release in our Dalby Alley Dram, which is one mm-hmm. of our non-aged uh, statement of whiskies. Mm-hmm. We do that for the Speyside Whiskey Festival at the start of May every 